Hello everyone! Welcome to the Fire TV Developer Days 2021. My name is Anisha Malde and I'm a developer evangelist here at Amazon. And today I'm going to discuss with you the key developer tools and strategies to enhance your developing experience for Fire TV. During the next 30 minutes, we will explore how you can easily build applications for Fire OS and in particular for Fire TV using the Fire App Builder. We will then delve deeper into the developer tools that allow you to increase discoverability of your content and tools that allows customers to engage more with your content. Finally, we will look into how you can better monetize your app. Before we can dive into how to develop for Fire TV, we need to understand how Fire TV works. Fire OS is the operating system that runs Amazon's Fire TV and tablets. Fire OS is a fork of Android. This means if you're building an Android application or you already have an Android application, you can easily port it to Fire OS and use the Android dev tools you may already be familiar with. The latest version of Fire OS 7 is based on Android 9, Pi. The main way Fire OS differs from Android is in its services. Instead of using Google services for activities, Fire OS uses Amazon services. Most notably, apps for Fire OS are provided through the Amazon App Store. At Amazon, we are always thinking about our customers, which in this case is you, our developers. So we wanted to bring you an even easier way to build applications for Fire devices. So we created a template called Fire App Builder. Fire App Builder provides a Java-based framework that you can use to easily and quickly build streaming media Android apps for Fire TV. Fire App Builder lets you build an engaging, high-quality media experience on Fire TV following best practices and techniques without having to develop all the code yourself. Fire App Builder's codes is Java-based and uses Android Studio, Gradle and other tools common to Android app development that you might be familiar with. This screen shows you what the main screen of the app looks like out of the box using some sample content and logos. You can get this type of app by just setting up configuration and pointing to a feed of your existing media. With Fire App Builder, you can create an app in less than an hour. Pretty cool, right? You just need to download the source for Fire App Builder from GitHub, set up some configuration files to specify how your feed is set up, and then customize the UI for your branding. If you want to extend functionality beyond that, you can add existing modules into the app to add advanced features. These include different advertising, analytics, login, and purchase options. You can also write your own Java code and integrate it into the framework. This could be to customize the look and feel, add custom metrics, or for custom advertising. Really, however you want to extend it, as you have the whole Java as your source. The app you build will be supported by the whole Amazon Fire TV family, giving you a really large audience. Another key advantage of Fire App Builder is the modular architecture we created. The diagram shows the different types of modules that you can plug and play into Fire App Builder. The advantage of this is that you can enable the modules that you need for the features that you want. If you want custom features or something that isn't supported yet, you can use the existing defined interfaces to write only the code that you need and leverage the rest of the framework. For example, to add a custom advertising provider, you can write a module to the existing interface. Your code will be called at the right time to display ads, and you don't need to write as much code as starting from ground up. So how can you build your app in under an hour? You start by configuring your feed. We develop configurations called recipes. These allow you to specify the format of your content and categories in your feed so the Fire App Builder understands them and can parse them. Next, you would configure the UI elements, such as fonts, colors, and logos, and enable any of those modules I just talked about. These modules are configured by adding them in the Gradle. Finally, you build the code that you configured in your Android Studio, and voila! you're on your way to launching your app. Let's dive a bit deeper into each of these steps. The first being creating your feed. On screen is some example feed content to show you what a typical feed of media would look like, showing the media ID, title, images, etc. Fire App Builder is able to parse feeds that are JSON or MRSS XML based. The next step is to give Fire App Builder a way to understand your unique feed. 
With Fire Builder, this is very easy as it provides a JSON file called Recipe, which is shown on screen. This allows you to map the content of your feed to the content Fire App Builder can display. This mapping happens in the match list section of the recipe. The red highlights show how to map what is in your feed to the blue parameters that Fire App Builder can parse that will allow you to display content in your app. The third step is to swap components. Fire App Builder is built as a plug and play system so you can easily swap components to customize your app's functionality. For example, if you have a Facebook auth component, as you can see on screen in your Gradle file, and you want to swap it out with a login with Amazon component, you can do this by just changing this line of code. Once you've activated the login with Amazon component by setting the verify screen access parameter to true, this is what the customer would see. As you can see, with just a couple of lines of code, your customer can easily log in with just a click of a button. Another way you can customize your app is through the look and feel by using different layout options. Currently, there are two different templates to pick from. You could also write your own or modify these if desired. The first template is what you've seen, and this is the default. It gives you rows of content below a larger image and shows you the content one row at a time. In the config files, you will see this is called content browse activity. The second is called full content browse. This gives you more of a tile display to show multiple rows of content at once. If you want your user to immediately see more content options at once, you can choose this option. This is just a glimpse into how easy it is to use Fire App Builder and some of the features that it offers. To get started, you can check out the open source project on GitHub and the technical documentation on our developer portal using the links on screen. Now that you have an app with content, how do you increase the discoverability of your content? Content is everywhere, so we have created various tools that allows you to get your content quicker to the eyes of your audience. One of the best ways to increase content discoverability on Fire TV is to add catalog integration. Catalog integration is the process of submitting your media to the Amazon so that it can be surfaced to viewers. Catalog integration allows your content to be included in the results of a search performed from the Fire TV home screen or through voice. It plugs in what we call Amazon Universal Search. The key advantages of catalog integration are it includes your content in universal search and browse results across content providers. It drives new customers to download and use your app. And it retains existing customers through prioritized search results and ease of use. It also qualifies content to be promoted through featured content on Fire TV. This sounds great, doesn't it? But how do you actually implement catalog integration? There are two different sets of steps you need to take on two different aspects of the implementation. The implementation of the catalogue itself and then your app. On the catalogue side, the first thing you have to do is define all the metadata about your media in a catalogue file that conforms to a specific XML schema. This is known as the catalogue data format or CDF. The second step is to include deep links to your content and finally, validate and match your catalogue using tools such as XML Lint. So how do you map your information to a CDF? Well, as you can see, there is a wealth of parameters to map to in the CDF file. Not all parameters are required. However, the more parameters you add, the higher the chance that a customer can find your content. Some tips to keep in mind are, you should include links for images and not base 64 of images themselves. And if a file is too big, remove references to trailers, music videos, etc. Once you've created the CDF file, the second step is to include deep links. As the CDF file is an XML file, you will need to add unique identifiers to map to the content that needs to be played. Each work's unique ID can also be a URI or JSON. The ID must be unique within your catalog and it should never change as long as you offer that work. The ID element is also used in associating work elements, for instance to specify a TV episode as part of a TV show or season. This is a simple example of what a CDF XML file should look like. 
The final step is validating your catalog. Once you've provided Amazon your catalog file, it will then be matched against IMBD, Amazon Video and other third-party catalog content. Finally, it will be presented as a unified search result to the customer. After you've set up your catalog, the next step is to integrate it in-app. This is done in three steps. First, integrate your app with the launcher. Next, add deep linking and finally submit your app. Configuring your app to be used with Fire TV's launcher integrates your media content and your user's subscription statuses with other content in Fire TV user interface. This process is also known as deep linking. In your code, deep linking is where you define how the Android activity deals with receiving an intent to playing your content. In this example, the data is passed as a URI or as a string, depending on how you implemented the deep link. Next, the deep link is parsed and used as reference information to the playback. Once you have integrated deep links, the final step is submitting your app on the developer portal. This can be done by dropping the APK on test widget, getting your result, resolving any issues, and then finally publishing your app. Once you have implemented catalog integration, your final custom experience should look like this. Customers can search for content directly and then consume the content based on a relative provider with just one click. It is important to note that catalog integration at the moment is only available to selected partners. If you are interested, please reach out to us and we will follow up. Or, for more information, check out the documentation on our developer portal using the link on screen. The second way to increase discoverability that I wanted to explore is Live TV integration. Through this integration, Live TV content can be promoted throughout Fire TV. Live TV channels and their content will appear in Fire TV's Live tab in the On Now row and an integrated channel guide will reveal up to 14 days of scheduling information. This is a high-level overview of Live TV architecture. The Live architecture is based off of the Android TV input framework that works in between the TV input, which is your app, and the Live TV experience embedded on Fire TV. So how do you actually implement Live TV? There are five key steps you have to follow. The first, import your TIF companion library. Second, set up TV input service. Third, insert your first channel. Fourth, insert programs. And finally, playback TV in the Fire TV UI. But don't worry, I'm gonna go into a bit more detail into all of these steps. The first step was importing the TIF companion library. This library provides an extensible implementation of common TV input service features. This can be imported by adding the following line to your Gradle file. The next step is to set up the TV input service. This is done in two parts. First, implement the TV input service in your Java component. Then, in your XML file, define the setup activity that is going to use this service. Subsequently, you can insert your first channel. To do this, the TV Input Framework database is used to send a new live channel straight from your app into the live TV experience in Fire TV, as shown in the diagram. In your code, this is done in two steps. First, the write EPG and read EPG data, which allows you to read and write the electronic programming guide data permissions, needs to be added to your manifest. Second, create the insert channel method in your Java code. In this method, Create content values and then put them into the channel table in the Android TV database. Next, use the TV input framework to build the URI. You can then insert the channel by invoking the insert channel method in the onCreate method in your setup activity. Once you have done this, the live TV experience will allow the viewer to initiate the preview playback. It creates a loop by creating a session between your application and the TV input manager that constantly updates the live TV experience with where an activity is performed by the viewer. The final step is to show the playback in the Fire TV UI. When a user selects a specific channel, the TV input service class will be called to create a session. 
The session is where you can choose the content, prepare the player and render channel content. The code on screen shows an example session. In the session, you will need to implement two key methods, onTune and onSet surface. OnTune is where you should identify the correct channel, retrieve the corresponding channel feed and prepare the media player to play the feed when you are ready. OnSet Surface is where you should set the provided surface instance to your media player, which will be used for when the preview is played back. And that should be it. Your app should now be integrated with Live TV. To find out more on how to implement Live TV, Check out the docs on our developer console using the link on screen. Fire TV puts your content front and center for customers. We continue to innovate to bring new ways to drive deeper engagement with your apps and games. One way of doing this is by implementing the voice in apps feature. Voice is an important pillar of engagement. Majority of Fire TV devices are voice enabled via the voice remote. This allows you to use what we call near-field voice controls using the voice button on the remote. So how do you get voice integration in your app? One great and easy way to do this on Fire TV is using Amazon Video Skills Kit, VSK. The VSK gives customers the power to use natural language commands to both find your content and control playback within the content. Not only will your app show up when a user searches for it specifically, but it will also show up when users search by genre or for specific shows. This allows you to reach more users who may not know about your brand or content offerings. With VSK, when a customer says something, this utterance is passed to the Alexa service, which then decomposes this into its key components. The VSK API then passes this to your VSK integrated application, which can then start playing the content back to the viewer. These are the main VSK enabled commands that a customer can give Alexa on Fire TV. As you can see, most of these commands don't require the customer to specify the app or provider of the content. That's because via catalog integration, the VSK backend can automatically resolve the content provider and in a matter of seconds, go straight into playback. This feature can also be integrated with live TV. As I mentioned, you can enable voice in multiple ways. Other than VSK, you can also use the Media Session API. You can also enable in-app scrolling and selection just by optimizing your application for standard Android navigation, and it will automatically work with voice. For more information on voice, you can find the documentation on our developer portal using the link on screen. We also have video tutorials on YouTube on this and many other great Fire TV features. So check out our channel, Amazon App Store Developers. One of the latest innovations that we have brought to Fire TV is Fire TV for Automotive. Fire TV for the first time is branching out of the living room and into cars. With this launch, customers are now able to enjoy the Fire TV experience in the car and stream the latest shows from the most popular video services. This product is now available in two Stellantis vehicles, the Jeep Wagoneer and the Jeep Grand Wagoneer. This is reinventing what Fire TV looks like. But since the entire Fire TV use case is different, we as developers have to rethink how we are building these applications. From a design perspective, we are used to thinking about the 10 foot or 3 meter UI, which is what happens when you are consuming content traditionally in a living room. When it comes to Fire TV Auto, it is a much smaller display only three foot, which offers a different kind of engagement for the customer. One of the biggest differences between Fire TV and Fire TV Auto will be that touch will come into play. While it may sound counterintuitive, we need to think about how we can add touch to a TV application. There are a few key things you need to think about. First, your application will need to be navigable by both the D-pad, which is the classic remote, and touch. You will need to apply directional navigation to TV app layouts and add touch interactions for clicks, such as on-click listeners. You will also need to manage view focus between the D-pad and touch interactions as customers may switch between the both. But once again, to enhance your developer experience, we have created a sample template 
that works with both touch and d-pad remote called the Fire TV Sample Touch app. This can be found on our GitHub through the link shown on screen. Now that we have covered how you can build and optimize discovery and engagement, last but not least, I want to talk about how you can monetize your app through the Amazon in-app purchasing API. There are many ways you can monetize your app, such as paid apps or advertising, but Amazon in-app purchasing API allows you to easily manage monetization through app items and subscriptions. The IAP allows your app to present, process and fulfill purchases of digital content and subscriptions within your app. So why should you use Amazon in-app purchasing, you might ask? Well, Amazon runs the purchase workflow starting from when the customer decides to purchase an item and ending when Amazon provides the app either a receipt for the purchase or a status code in the case of a failed purchase. You don't need to provide purchase dialogues, transaction timeout logic, or thank you dialogues. The Amazon App Store provides all of these pieces of information about the transaction. Once a user initiates a purchase, the Amazon App Store client app surfaces and presents an Amazon branded UI to complete the transaction. Amazon presents the user interface for all aspects of the purchase workflow, starting from the logic to display the purchasable item, performing the purchase, and handling any preconditions or error scenarios. The IAP also offers Amazon one-click settings, which mean when customers are already logged in, purchases are just one click away. With so many advantages, I'm sure you want to know how the IAP API works under the hood. There are three main components of this, the purchasing service, the response receiver, and the purchasing listener. The purchasing service is a class that initiates requests through the Amazon App Store. These are then received by the response receiver, which is a class that receives broadcast intents from the Amazon App Store. Finally, the purchasing listener is an interface that receives asynchronous responses to the requests initiated by the purchasing service. The in-app items are broken into three categories, consumables, entitlements, and subscriptions. These share the following information fields, title, SKU, content delivery, availability and pricing, description, and images. Subscriptions on top of these also have subscription periods and free trial as fields. I'm sure you can't wait to get started with Amazon's in-app purchasing. So to do this, download the App Store SDK for Android or Unity, which contains the in-app purchasing API and documentation. You can also check out the tutorial on how to get started or transition to the App Store SDK for in-app purchasing on our YouTube channel. Well, that's it from me. Thank you for your time. I hope this was useful in learning about developing for Amazon Fire TV. To discover more, head over to developer.amazon.com or follow us on Twitter and subscribe to our YouTube channel, Amazon App Store Developers. But before you go, we will be switching over to our live Q&A in just a moment, so stay tuned. Thanks again.